Hello and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to show you how you can use Asana to create a content or editorial calendar. So this is perfect if you need to plan content for a blog, maybe videos, podcasts, maybe it's social media posting. If you just need a better process or system for planning what content you have coming up, the status, any kind of notes, and more importantly, the steps that you need to do to create and publish that content, I think Asana is the perfect tool for that kind of process. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you do need one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing your Asana account, maybe training your team and getting more out of Asana, then check out the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. Okay, so let's get into this video. Now, I'm gonna just show you how I use Asana to plan content for my business. And starting over here in my sidebar, you can see I have a project named pretty simply, I just call it content. Now, one of the nice things about Asana is that you can view a project in lots of different ways. So here I have the pretty classic list view, and you can see I've got sections for um, content that I'm kind of planning, or it's still sort of in that ideation phase. And then I have a section here for what's been scheduled. This is actually coming up. This is now in progress. I could view this as a board if I like, or a timeline, and I can see when different um, content is being published. But for a content calendar, I actually find this calendar view to be the most useful because I publish at a pretty sort of consistent schedule. I publish on a Monday and a Friday, different types of content. And so if I go back in time here, I can see a really clear history of when I've published and what I have coming up in the future. So that's the first thing is um, deciding kind of how you want to set up your project. My recommendation, like I said, is to use this calendar view. And if you like that view, you can save this layout, this calendar screen, as your default. Now, actually, I'm gonna switch back to the list to just explain a little bit in terms of how I've customized this project specifically for managing content. So the first thing I've done is let's go back to, let's go to this video. And basically each task here, each of these rows, each of these is a task, and each task corresponds to a piece of content that I'm creating. I use the task name up here as basically the title for the content. So um, I know that you know when I'm searching on my blog or my virtual assistant when she's creating like thumbnail images and things, we all know that this task name, that is the title of the video, of the blog post, of the podcast that we're working on. I've assigned it to myself, you know, I'm the one in charge of getting this done, so I've assigned the main parent task to myself. And the date here, this date represents the date I'm going to publish that piece of content. So this getting started with one password video, this is coming up, I'm gonna be publishing this on a Friday. And so that's why if I go to my calendar here, you can see that task here appears on my calendar on Friday the 16th. And so I'm basically using those dates as my schedule. This is when the content is going out. Now, obviously, I need to do some work before this. I can't get this all done on the Friday. So if I scroll down here, I have a list of subtasks, and these subtasks are what I use to plan who is doing what in preparation for getting this post ready. So actually, I recorded this video just before. I, I do my recording, my video recording in batches. I'm doing four videos today. And so this um, really should be assigned to me, and I recorded this today. Now, my uh, a contractor on my team, Warwick, is gonna be editing the video. He needs to get this done by um, let's say tomorrow. So I'm gonna assign this to Warwick for tomorrow. I'm then gonna make sure that I upload the video by Wednesday. And that's gonna give my virtual assistant, Judy, enough time to do all of these tasks. And she, she needs to get these done by Thursday. So she's gonna get all that done by Thursday so that this can be ready to publish on uh, a Friday. And so the subtasks really are just that checklist of what are the steps we need to go through. So I can, you can use subtasks for things like planning, you know, drafting or recording videos, uploading to YouTube. In this case, I've got Judy preparing thumbnails, adding video cards, descriptions, creating a WordPress post, all that kind of thing. To actually streamline this a little bit more, one of the things that I've done in this project is I've created task templates for the different types of content that I create. So if I go to my customize menu, you can see I've got these templates here. 
So if I edit this, you can see I have a, a sort of a blog post template. So these are the steps that I go through for a blog post. You know, I need to write it, record the podcast, create a quality featured image, all that kind of thing. For a video, the checklist is slightly different. You know, it's recording, it's editing, it's uploading, it's getting it loaded onto YouTube. And for my Asana and Pipedrive newsletter, um, really the, these are just um, kind of quick and easy ways to create a new task. I actually don't have subtasks for these. But I have those templates ready to go. So when I have a new idea for a video or a blog post, rather than starting with a blank task, I can choose my template here and I can say this is a blog post. And you can see Asana is just generating it here, but it generates that list of um, subtasks ready to go. So I'm using the same checklist every single time. So I would highly recommend if you are using Asana, for content planning, you use those task templates to outline what are those, uh, you know, what does that checklist look like for getting a blog post or a video ready? And it's a really useful way of making sure you're following a consistent process every single time and not missing important steps. Now, a couple of other ways that I've customized this project. Let's go back to that task that I was on before. So I've got my, I've got it assigned to me. It's publishing this Friday. I've got my checklist down here. I use the description here for basically writing down my notes and kind of like the agenda or the ideas for this video or for the blog post that I'm working on. So I've just said here, you know, I'm improving on the existing video, um, some instructions here in terms of how to set up a guest account. And then I've just outlined some bullet points in terms of the things that I wanna discuss and talk about in the video. So if I actually show you, um, how to, how to create a content calendar. You know, this is the video that I'm recording right now. You can see I've just bullet pointed out, these are the main topics that I want to cover, the things that I want to, to discuss in my video. So that all goes into the description. Some other things that I do in my content calendar is I've customized the project with a few extra custom fields. So if I go to my customize menu, one of the fields that I have is this status field. So this helps me to set up, where are we at with this piece of content? Is it just an idea? You know, it's I'm still kind of fleshing it out, still in that ideation phase. Have I scheduled this in terms of I've, you know, I've got the idea ready. I know when it's going to be published. In progress is, you know, we're working on it now. And then ready to publish is, yeah, it's all been edited, uploaded. It's ready to go. So I can look in my project here and I can see which ones are, you know, what, what stage everything is at. So this one's actually in progress. Um, let's see. This one's actually in progress, I should update that. And this one's in progress as well. So I can just at a glance see what is the status of each of these pieces of content. I also have a custom field for the category. Because I discuss different topics and things, I use the category here to outline, you know, what what is the primary topic of this video. So I produce content related to productivity, self-improvement, Asana, pipe drive. And so I can look at this and just make sure that I'm getting a nice mix of content across different categories in my uh, in my schedule. And then the other custom field I want to highlight is the sponsor. So this is just a text field, but um, in my case, you know, I, I have often um, paid sponsored spots in my podcast. And so let's look at how to plan your time. This is a blog post that I'm working on and it's gonna be a podcast as well. And you can see here I've listed OutFunnel. OutFunnel is the sponsored slot that is going to be um, occupied in the podcast episode. So those are a couple of the custom fields that I use just to add some extra information and track the status of each piece of content. Now, as you've probably noticed, I also use these tags here for highlighting and recording what type of content is this. So in this case, this is a blog post and it's gonna be a podcast. Uh, this video is just a video. And if we actually go to the calendar, you can see the colors on the calendar basically correspond to that tag. So I know that all these red ones are the videos and these blue ones here are the blog posts. And then yellow is an email or like a newsletter that's being sent. Now you might be wondering, why are you using a tag instead of a custom field? You know, I could have just had a field like this, couldn't I? Well, the reason for using a tag is um, I want to actually apply multiple tags to a piece of content. So this is a blog and it's a podcast. Now with a drop down menu, you can only apply one field at a time. So for outlining the type of content, really it's better to do that with a tag rather than a single option drop down so that I can apply multiple at once.
One of the other things I've done with this project is I've customized it with some rules. So I've set up a rule here where when I change that status field from idea to scheduled, I can move the task to a certain section. Or if I move it from scheduled back to an idea, I can move it to the ideas section. So if you watch what happens here, let's do, um, let's say that this, a day in the life of Paul Miners, this is an idea. If I change it to scheduled, Without touching anything, Asana is automatically going to move that down into my scheduled section, which is automatically sorted everything by date. And again, if I change that back to idea, the rule is going to push that back up to the ideas section. So just a kind of subtle little way, as I change the status, I can have the task move around uh, between different sections. And if you like this board layout in Asana, those rules are quite useful uh, when using the board layout, if you want to move things through sections and have that update fields along the way as well. Now, a little bonus tip in terms of how I create content, as I mentioned before, I like to batch uh, my recordings and do everything at once. So what I usually do is once a month, I'll record four videos and um, I do that in one day. Just I find it's really efficient when I've got the microphone set up, I'm in that sort of recording mindset ready to go. I can smash out a bunch of videos and get them all recorded in one go. So I actually create a task to do this. So I'm, I'm recording a batch today and this is just recording a batch of videos. I've tagged it with videos. And then what I've done here is I've hyperlinked the videos that I'm going to record. So the way you do this is in the description, if I type the at symbol, let's just say, you know, a detailed summary. I'm starting to type the name of this task over here and then I can click that. And now I've hyperlinked to that task. So basically this is kind of like a summary task that I use to show these are the four tasks that are, or the four videos that I'm working on as part of this batch. And again, when I look at my content calendar, I can see right today, I'm recording a batch of videos. I can click on that, I can see which ones they are. In fact, I can kind of see them on the right hand side coming up here. So that's just sort of a little, you know, time management hack that I use um, to, instead of having to do one video a week, I can record a bunch of videos in one go and really kind of plan ahead with all of my content. And so that is a look at my simple content calendar in Asana. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.